Hello everyone, this is Human Hard Drive, and today we're continuing on with the Arduino tutorials. We're actually getting to get into the first um, programming one. Um, today we're starting with what is essentially the Hello World of microcontroller stuff. If you've watched my Arduino tutorial, you've heard me say that before. Um, so what we're g trying to accomplish today is we're going to blink on and off an LED. And we're going to accomplish that by using the Arduino's onboard LED. It's right there. Uh, it's pin. It's connected to pin 13. That's a digital output, and that's what we're going to be doing today. Um, this is my Arduino. I've had to, um, well, for lack of a better word, disable the LED on pin 13. So if you see me doing stuff, well, actually, it's probably just in this tutorial. Uh, I've connected pin 13 to an external LED so that you can still see it blink. Okay, uh, so this is the basic setup if you want to do this externally. Um, what I've done is I've connected a resistor from pin 13 to the LED. Now the LED has two leads, a shorter lead and a longer lead. The longer lead gets connected, let's see if you can see this. The longer lead gets connected into the row with the resistors, and the shorter end gets connected into the, the, the adjacent row. And then that row is connected to ground, and that's it. So let's move on to the code. Now before we go ahead and get started with the programming of the Arduino, what we're going to do is I'm going to take you through the setup of the Arduino IDE, and the drivers for the Arduino, assuming you haven't done this already. Um, this is a Windows tutorial. Um, I don't know how to do this for Mac or Linux because I've only had a Windows machine all my life. So with that, let's get started. So what we're going to do is we're going to come on up here to our browser and we're going to go to arduino.cc, which is the Arduino homepage. And we're going to come up here to download. And right here, you're going to click Windows and download it. Now this isn't an install file, so it's not an EXE or an MSI. It's a zip file, and within that zip file contains all of the files necessary to get started. So I've already gone ahead and downloaded it and extracted it. And here it is. So here it is, and here's the IDE. But before we can get started with the IDE and the programming, um, we have to install the drivers. Now, the Arduino will appear to your computer once you've installed the drivers as a virtual COM port. That's a virtual serial port because if you have a computer made within, say, the last well, I don't know, five years, uh, a serial port is going to be hard to come by. So what Arduino's done is they've created a well, they haven't created it. They've found drivers and written software for the Arduino that will let it communicate with this virtual system. So, I've gone ahead and I've opened up Device Manager. <clears throat> if you don't know where that is, that's under your control panel. If you don't know where that is, it's probably on your start menu. There it is, control panel. So, if you go ahead and I've got my Arduino set up, so if I plug it in, as I will do now, there we go, makes a little noise. Now, it's going to go ahead and try and install the driver. And after a while, it'll realize it can't. And you'll see over here under other devices, it doesn't know what to do. Oh, see, there it is. Doesn't know what to do. So, what we're going to do is we're going to tell it where to find these drivers. So, you're going to go ahead and right click, say update driver software, and you're going to browse your computer. Now, I've put it on my desktop. This is just to show you. I've actually gone ahead and put the one I use on a daily basis in my program file. So what you're going to do is want to do is put this folder someplace you remember where it is so it's easy to access. So for now, it's on my desktop. So I'm just going to go ahead and browse and come to my desktop. And all the way down here, it should say Arduino 1.1. And I'm going to come down and it's going to say drivers and I'm just going to click on that folder. And make sure you've checked the checkbox include subfolders so that it will search all of the folders so it finds the appropriate driver for your computer. I'm going to go ahead and click next. It's going to go ahead and start to install it. 
Now it's going to say it can't verify, it doesn't know who this is, go ahead and install the driver anyway. And when it's done, shouldn't take too long. Now it's going to say it's a communications port. That's the serial, that's the virtual serial port. And so if you close that and you look back at your refreshed d device manager, communications port COM4. You're going to want to remember this number, COM4, because that's going to be what the IDE is going to identify your Arduino as. So you're going to open up your Arduino IDE, let that run, and here it is. Just blow this full screen. If I can zoom in a bit. Okay. So what we're going to do is you're going to first go to tools, and you're going to go to board, and this is where you select the board you've bought. Uh, this is for the Arduino, so I've gone ahead and checked that. If you're using the Arduino Mega, it's not too different. Um, you're just going to click that. Or if you're using some other derivative, you're going to go ahead and click that. You're also going to check your serial port. Um, there might, more than one might pop up. That's okay. Just click the one you remember from your device manager. Mine was COM4. And there you go. So let's go ahead and get started with our code. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and make that pin 13 LED blink. So let's get started. The first function, there are two functions that are manded, that are required by the Arduino IDE in order to download any program. That's void setup and void loop. Nope, oh, I typed void void. Whoops. There we go. Okay. Void setup is the first function that's called. And it's only run once, and it's sort of the setup, and what you'll do, well, it is the setup. So what it does, you can put in here your pin definitions, um, any setups you'll need, any begins you'll need, we'll talk about those later, uh, just the basic stuff. You're not going to, or variable initializations, you're not going to want to put variable declarations in here, because then it'll only be recognized by the setup. So we're going to talk about that as we get on late uh, in later programs. So what we're going to do is we're going to say pin mode 13 output. I'll move my mouse, realizing you can't see that. Output being in all caps. Now what pin mode says is it's going to set pin 13 as either an output or an input. Output means it'll drive voltage. Input means it'll sync voltage. So or current. I should say, sorry. Um, so output, it'll turn on the LED or it'll turn off the LED. It's going to control something. And then we're going to say digital write. Digital write is a function that only works with um, output pins. So you're going to say digital write, pin 13, and then we're going to say low. In other words, we're going to turn it off. So if it was on before, it's now going to be turned off. It's going to be driven low. Now we're going to come into our loop. So void setup is run, and then it's going to hop right into the loop. This is the thing that's going to be run over and over and over and over again in your, in your program. It's the main loop. So we're going to say digital write 13 high. There we go. And then delay 1000. Now, again, digital write 13, the pin number, and then high. We're driving it high. We're turning it on. So that'll turn the LED on. Delay is the wait function. Now, in this delay, nothing's going to happen. You, the pin's not going to change state. Your board's not going to turn off. It's not going to go into sleep. It's just going to hold still for 1,000 milliseconds. This is one second, 1,000 milliseconds. So one millisecond is a thousandth of a second. All delay commands, as opposed to well, the delay command, requires millisecond input. So it's going to wait. Then we're going to digital write 13 low again. So it's going to be turned on. It's going to wait for one second. It's going to turn it off, and then we're going to wait another second, and then it's going to jump back to the top of the loop, turn it on, wait, turn it off, wait, turn it on, wait, turn it off, wait. And that's it. So just to go through the program flow again, 
void setup, void loop, two functions. Void setup is always called on top of void loop. Uh, I do that just to help me remember the program flow. Don't think it's actually necessary to do it that way, but I could be wrong. I've always done it that way. Um, pin mode requires two arguments, the pin number and the status of the pin, either an input or an output, always caps. Then we said digital write, so we're initializing that pin low. We're turning it off. And again, two arguments, the pin number and the status, high or low, always in caps. These two will turn blue to let you know you've done it right. So then we jump into void loop. We turn it on, 13, high. We wait, delay, always in milliseconds. We turn it off and wait again, and it jumps back into the loop. And this will run uh, over and over and over again as long as the board is powered. As soon as you unplug it, it's going to stop. And as soon as you plug it in, it's going to void setup, void loop all over again. And so that's it. So if you've got your Arduino plugged in, what we're going to do is we're going to start by hitting this check mark. That's the verify. So it's going to compile, and it's going to check for any errors. And right down here, it's going to tell you binary sketch size, uh, the size of the program, and the maximum. This was 1,034 bytes. The Arduino Uno thing I'm using right now has a maximum of uh, 32 kilobytes, which is a lot. So we could write a program 32 times the size. I'm sure that doesn't scale up with the lines of code wise. So there have been no errors. If I had, if there had been an error, uh, let's say this is based on C. So if I had removed, say, this semicolon, every line has to end in a semicolon, and I'd hit verify, see, expected semicolon. So we're just going to go back and put in that semicolon and verify it again. And it takes a while, and it should say everything's fine. Yep, everything's fine. Okay. So one last step, you're going to hit upload. What that's going to do <coughs> is it's going to send it down the USB cable to the Arduino. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And I'm going to switch back over to the other view. So here we are back with the Arduino. Um, this is just before I've hit the upload process, the upload thing. Um, you, I've got it plugged in, and your power LED should be on. Now what you're going to want to do is, if I lift this up and show you, you're going to want to pay special attention to these two pins. These are the TX and RX pins, which we'll talk about when we get into serial communication. But these two, these two will light up when you start uploading. It means that the computer is talking to the chip. So if I go ahead and hit upload again, there we go. So if you watch, they should have lit up. Yeah, again, small program, so it wouldn't have been very long. And if we look at the final result, I, you can see my LED is turning on for a second and off for a second. And again, this will keep run for running for as long as there's power. So if I unplug the USB, it turns off. If I plug it back in, it starts going again. And so that is it. Um, so I should point out that the blink code that we just wrote is an example file in the Arduino IDE. So if you go under File, uh, Examples, Basics, you will find blink. So that is it for this video. Um, next time we're going to be talking more about, instead of talking so, uh, about outputs, we're going to talk about inputs. So get ready for that. And if you actually don't have a breadboard, uh, I'm just, I'm, there we go, unplug that. Uh, this is like four bucks from SparkFun, um, or you can buy a separate breadboard. Uh, I strongly encourage getting one because it makes doing a lot of things we're going to get into a lot easier just to be able to connect wires from your board to the breadboard to hook circuits up and it makes it a lot easier. So again, strongly encouraging. So this has been another, this has been Human Hair Drive and thanks for watching.